number one on the dome of charts. The guy that nobody knows is winning the polls. Mm. Yeah. The guy that nobody knows is winning the polls. Winning the polls. Yeah. The guy that nobody knows ain't stopping your trolls. How the hell he do that? Dome of sports, dog. Worldwide. With some news in the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. How the hell they do that? Uh, nah, we ain't gonna go there. But y'all know that the guy that nobody knows won the polls. Remember Anthony Joshua made the polls. Who he should fight on April the 13th. Deontay Wilder wins the polls. And we try to ignore that. And then two weeks later, <laughs> two weeks later, your boy Eddie Hearn says that nobody knows him. Right, no matter where you go, nobody knows him. But all from the from a half a million people, Deontay Wilder wins the polls by far. And the guy that comes in second was Tyson Fury. The guy that comes way in third with five percent was Dillian White. Now the other guys, Tyson Fury had forty two percent, Deontay Wilder had fifty two or fifty three percent. Not sure. Okay, but he wins by far. So but nobody knows him though. They vote for him to fight at Joshua, but nobody knows him. So I like to mention that from time to time because of people that come in and could constantly talk down on the man, right? Constantly talk down on the man, right? So here's something else. The newest news in the nobody knows, right? You got a big fight coming up, well, for Britain <clears throat> on the 22nd of December, which would pitch, uh, pit Dillian White versus your boy, Derek Chisora. <clears throat> Going to be a good fight. We talked about it. Derek Chisora has gotten with uh, David Hay. Uh, it's going to be a good fight, <clears throat> like the first one was, right? Significant for England. And the winner will be fighting Anthony Joshua. We know that as well. Well, these two guys weighed in on the Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder fight. And even though they don't ever agree on things, they agree on this. This fight is too soon for Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury going to get knocked out. That's what they believe. They don't want to believe it, both of them. They're like, we go for the Union Jack, baby. We're going for our own. That's how we roll, but we, you know, hey, we got to be real on this one. We think it might be a little too early to be messing with Deontay Wilder. Uh, Derek Chazur, who takes punches for a living. This guy, has, you're talking about punch resistance, you're talking Derek Chazur. Because he's going to take some to give some. He says that this guy here punches like a mule, right? And uh, even Dillian White, who is not renowned for giving Deontay Wilder any kind of props. You know, he ain't the best fighter or whatever, but I think it's too early. <laughs> Still, you know what I mean? So those are two other guys. Now, does some more information. Now, you got to imagine Tyson Fury is 6'9", 260, with a, a high boxing IQ. Uh, it's hard to hit. Just made Pianata like everybody going to make Pianata. I like to see Derek Chazur or Dillian White versus Ch Derek, uh, uh, Francesco Pianeta. They don't make him look like Tyson Fury made him look. Made him look like he was just out there joking around, didn't he? Tyson Fury, 6'9", 260, with, you know, the IQ that he has, the, the, the fact that he's so unorthodox, the fact that he's just incredibly hard to hit, right? All of those attributes. And he still has youth. But he, they think it's too early to fight Deontay Wilder. Question would be, would it be too early to fight others? That's the question. And it's probably a resounding no. Probably one or two other fighters on the planet that it wouldn't be too early for. But it's too early for Deontay Wilder. Right? There you have it. Again, this guy that is nothing, that nobody knows, that's a windmiller, that's chicken legs, that's a bum squad, that's a bum himself, the fighters that he fought that are bums, all of these things. So for those people who continue to think that, you remind me of people that Trump, <laughs> like Trump supporters. You know, you watch a guy does something just ridiculous day in and day out. But he can depend on you guys to follow no matter what. Because there's one resounding thing that's in the front, forefront of their mind and their emotions. First of all, it's racism. That's first. Because they call it his base, but basically there's white racist people. And there's a horse of them. No matter how bad he does something, he's basically a criminal, but they follow him anyway. And they, they hide behind the economy is doing well. Well, the economy was doing well towards the end of Obama's uh, uh, reign. Well, I could say reign, but his tenure, right? So it was doing well. But the economy, right, is doing well. 
doesn't matter if he basically says he's a nationalist or basically if he says that he's basically racist, that the people right about him, eight people around him have been indicted, about to go to jail. He's about to go to jail, basically. All of those things do not matter, right, because he can hide behind the economy. They know it's racist. We have had terror attacks from white supremacists in the, in the states and the, like, and the like, right? Attacks on synagogues. All of those things don't matter because there's something else in the forefront of their mind. And that's racism. And they hide behind the economy is doing well. Doesn't that sound like anybody with a little bit of history? Not much, just a little. Hitler, the same thing. Exact same thing. Right? I don't like nobody. We're killing people. But the economy would do well. We're building the Autobahn. Right? Got a dude in Brazil right now. The new president of Brazil said, you know what? Everybody who's against me, I'm putting in jail. I don't like people of color. It's not going to happen. I'm going to mess up the Amazons. We don't care. And we're going to start some stuff around here. Said that before he got elected. But because the people, because they think the economy might get better, they would choose someone like that. Now, this phenomenon is going on all over the world. We blame it on immigrants or, you know, or um, the other guys, you know, that are coming into your, to your countries. Most of the time, people of color or or, or uh, people just don't look like the white people, right? So therefore, we get upset, and at the end of the day, racism, nationalism, is the primary emotion, regardless of how you, how you uh, slice it. And that's going on throughout the world, which leads me to believe something's going on. I think the aliens have said, y'all ain't gonna get it together. Let's just spray some stuff on the whole world, just make them go crazy quicker. Then they're going to go crazy anyway. They're going to mess up the world anyway. Let's just make, accelerate this process. Because something else is going on. This phenomenon is going on. We are definitely getting apart. But that's a little bit too far. I don't want to go in that too much. But it just reminds me of, you know, the fans that continue to get proof over and over and over again about this Deontay Wilder. And it's because the fear of him is what's primary in these guys' mind. If he was 14 and, and, and 2 would seven knockouts, and somebody would have offered Anthony Joshua like 80 million for two fights against that guy, I'm, he's taking it. Who else would Anthony Joshua not take 80 million minimum for two fights to go fight? Anywhere on the planet, who else? Is there another fighter? Think about it, guys. Anyone else? You think he's not going to fight Dillian White for that kind of money? Povetkin for that kind of money? Jarrell Miller for that kind of money? Only one maybe would be Lewis the Real King Kong Ortiz. Why is it that this skinny guy at 220 pounds has this much respect, but some fans keep acting like he doesn't have that respect, like they don't see it? They're not. I told you in videos six months ago, for 80 million, fans should have been at Deontay, uh, Anthony Joshua's house and written a limo, ready to drive the limo, to drive him all the way to the airport, get him in a plane with nobody else in it. He can have his own plane, private. Go and go in there and fly the plane for him to get in there to go get that money. But for some reason, no. And the reason is Deontay Wilder hits like a mule, to quote Derek Chisora. And he doesn't get tired. And he hasn't been down yet, even though he weighs nothing. And he has chicken legs. Why hasn't the chicken legs been on the ground? Those big old legs from Matthew Joshua and others are always on the ground. Or stumbling around. Right? It doesn't matter. Both of these guys and most of these heavyweights are good. Right? And so you have to acknowledge that. You know, even like, you know, like for example, if I was a hater, I wouldn't acknowledge that Anthony Joshua is the bomb. The man got three titles. You can say good things about the guy, except for when it's time we're talking about Deontay Wilder. And I think, hmm, there he doesn't really want to fight this guy. But that ain't too many other guys. I don't think he wants any part of Luis Ortiz either. Because he would, he would do it by now. But anybody else, and that's not bad if you're talking about the whole planet of boxers. But I just don't like when fighters get all the love and the props and the adulations and the accolades. And there's people that they don't want to fight. And it doesn't stop at Anthony Joshua. You guys know this goes for Gennady Golovkin, who is worse right now. His behavior is nothing of that of a guy who was... Uh, the, supposedly to be the best middleweight in 25 years, but don't want to fight anybody, any mandatories, or any other champions in that division right now. So that means we take him out of the pound for pound. 
And Melo Alvarez, who I'm look, really fighting at different weight classes, getting gift decisions, right? And acting like he's the face of boxing, but he is. Is he the best? Had 154 pounds? Never was. All those guys were there. Is he the best at 160 now? No, he isn't. And he ain't going to prove it. And don't have to. So there's a consistency there. This is not an anti Joshua thing. This is just, hey, dudes, right and wrong. Let's find out who the best is or not. And those that don't will get called out on it. So back to the top. Derek Chisura and Dillian White, both of whom don't like Deontay Wilder, want to go for the English guy. Consider that Tyson Fury, this is way too early and he's going to get knocked out. And another English guy, the best English guy in the history of boxing, Lennox Lewis, and my favorite heavyweight of all time, which I like to say to make sure that no one thinks this is an English thing, Lennox Lewis, my favorite fighter of all time, uh, heavyweight, Roy Jones, my favorite fighter, but my favorite heavyweight of all time, also said, Joshua, you're in charge. You have to make the fight happen. You have to make Eddie Hearn make the fight happen. So are we upset at him too? And I saw a few people that had the, the audacity, the blasphemous, to say something negative about Lennox Lewis to protect Anthony Joshua. And that is ridiculous. Don't sports talk. Worldwide. And I'm about to hear y'all.